Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and I have something really exciting for you here today. Take a look at the M41 Walker Bulldog with a 90mm. This is going to be the first tier 8 premium German light tank in the game. If like me you loved the M41 Walker Bulldog, the tier 7 American light tank but were really disappointed with the derpy gun on the T49 then look no further than the M41 90mm. And this vehicle also caters to those of you who really love light tanks and want to make decent credits like the tier 8 premium medium and heavies do but you don't want to play your tier 7 premium light tanks like the type 62 or the AMX 1357 that really just can't compare with profitability. And that's where the M41 90mm comes into play and boy does it have a sexy black paint job as well. Firstly I'm going to run over the statistics of this vehicle, see how it weighs up to the competition and then show you some ace tanker gameplay. So here we have the M41 90mm on the left, the M41 Walker Bulldog which remember is a tier 7 American light tank, the Speerpanzer RU251, the tier 8 German light tank and the T49 which I'm going to be equipping with the 90mm but remember that this 90mm has HEP ammunition as its standard rounds and you have to fire expensive heat rounds if you want to have a high penetration shell. So firstly we find that the M41 90mm doesn't have the best DPM, it's better than the Walker Bulldog when the vehicle is using the single shotgun but it's not quite as good as the T49 with the 90mm if you choose to fire those heat rounds. And unfortunately the vehicle has 6% less DPM than its tier 8 German counterpart the RU251. The penetration on the 90mm is better than the Walker Bulldog but remember these are AP shells and not APCR shells and so they go to the target so much slower at 830 meters a second rather than 1200 meters a second. And they have marginally worse penetration than the RU251 and way worse penetration if you choose to fire heat rounds with the T49. One thing that I should mention is that the RU251 has these heat rounds that go very quickly towards the target. Look at the difference between the AP velocity and the heat velocity. 805 meters versus 1145. Usually heat rounds go towards the target slower and that's what makes the RU251 special that it gets those high velocity heat rounds. Which is, as far as I can tell right now, something that is missing from the M41 with the 90mm heat rounds. But one good thing about this tank is it gets HEP rounds for its third ammunition type, high explosive, high penetration rounds. With 102mm of penetration, bumping up the alpha damage to 320 rather than 240. These can be very very useful for when you're engaging lightly armoured targets or you have the side and the rear of heavily armoured targets and can really bump up the DPM of the vehicle and put it above even an equal tier tank destroyer. One thing that is beautiful on the M41 with the 90mm however is the weapon handling 1.8 seconds aim time way better than the RU251 or the T49 and look at the dispersion it's better while moving it's better while turning the tank and it's just as good as the RU251 when it's turning the turret and that's because the gun handling is basically the same as the Walker Bulldog but it has 0.1 seconds less aim time than the single shot gun on that vehicle. And Unfortunately, however, the M41 with the 90mm has only 8 degrees of gun depression. They just had to make it German, right? But luckily, this gun depression is completely around the vehicle, so you're never going to have the awkward moments like you do have with the RU251 that only has 6 degrees of gun depression over the majority of the front of the tank and minus 1 degree of gun depression over the back, which is something that really puts me off about the standard tier 8 German light tank and a definite bonus for the premium variant. So how about the mobility for the first tier 8 premium light tank in the game? Well it goes at 72 kilometers an hour which is just as fast as the M41 and the T49 but slightly worse than the excellent top speed of the RU251. But unfortunately the vehicle has 50 worse horsepower than the M41 Walker Bulldog or the T49 giving the vehicle the worst power to weight ratio of all of these tanks. And while the ground resistances help the vehicle to catch up to the RU251 and the T49 being better on hard terrain, medium terrain and soft terrain, the vehicle's ground resistances are worse than the M41 Walker Bulldog so if you're used to the speed of this tank and we're hoping that you're going to be able to bomb it round just as quickly but with a 90mm you might be slightly disappointed but not too much. So how about the armour of the M41 with the 90mm? Well pretty much if you get hit anywhere in the tank you are going to have to be exceedingly lucky to not get penetrated even with most high explosive rounds. So I guess you just gotta hope that that sexy black paint job is going to dissuade your opponents from hitting you right? One thing that's great about this vehicle after playing the M41 Walker Bulldog so long at tier 7 is that it gets the health of a tier 8 light tank the same as the T49, unfortunately less than the RU251 
251, but having that extra 190 hit points will make you so much more resilient than the Walker Bulldog at tier 7. And finally, thankfully as well, Wargaming have not skimped on the view range. 400 meters means that you are going to get an excellent spotting distance if you use coated optics and a plethora of other skills for your commander. But anyway, I think that's quite enough theory crafting. Let's see how this beast performs in some gameplay. So here we go, we're playing on Redshire and we're in quite a nice matchup for this tank. Now, why is that? Well, there's three artillery on my team. And when you're in a light tank, I love having artillery. That means there's more to hunt at the end of the game on the enemy team. And also, I can use my artillery, provide them with view range to pretty much overcome all obstacles. And also, remember that your tier 8 light tanks get matched up as if they were a tier 9 medium tank. And so pretty much I feel like I'm a top tier tank where I'm in this kind of gameplay. Now you might see my amazing driving there, driving into the building, and that's because this was the first ever game I played in this vehicle, and I was frantically trying to click everything. Oh gosh, turn off those optical effects in sniper mode, turn on the stabilization, and so on and so forth. So we're making our way into position along this ridgeline. From here, we can spot quite deep along the northern part of the map. Unfortunately, there are these trees here which kind of block some of the vision, but we saw a tree fall there, maybe we're going to be able to take advantage of him. There's an AMX 1390 across the other side of the ridge, but unfortunately he's hiding behind a rock, so not much opportunity to be able to take him out there. Now, there is a bug going on in this replay. This, this is not correct. I am using chocolate. I have got a very skilled crew. I've got situational awareness. I've got recon. I've got brothers in arms. I'm using coated optics. My view range will be right up towards the 445 meters spotting cap. And... As we can clearly see here, because of the excellent view range, we can see tanks right up until that 445 meter point, just completely negating the advantage of any kind of camo they might have. So, right off the bat, let's take a look and see the performance of this 90 millimeter gun. 182 millimeters of penetration, remember, on these standard AP rounds. And unfortunately, we were unable to go through the Tiger II there, hitting him several times. That was a bit of a disappointment for me. I was like, oh no, I just had that realization that when you're playing your top tier light tanks, that sniping can be quite tricky unless you literally have the side of the enemy vehicle. So what we saw me do there is wiggle my turret to the left and to the right, and that's because I figured out that I don't have horizontal stabilization enabled. These two options really are absolutely awesome in World of Tanks. I have them enabled at default, and it means that you can hit targets while moving a lot easier, in my opinion. If you haven't tried that option, definitely check it out. But if you have already used it, then well, you know what I'm talking about and how it's almost impossible to play without it once you've tried it out. So there's a T10 here advancing. There's also an E75. That means both of the enemy tier nine heavy tanks have advanced along this flank. And I'm just waiting for the combat to, to begin, really. When you're playing in your light tanks, the worst thing that you can do is either suicide scout or burn too brightly too quickly. If you do that, all you're going to achieve is a waste of a fantastic gun. We need to think that I'm basically a, a very good tier 8 medium tank. I've got a better DPM than any tier 8 medium tank as far as I'm aware. I'm firing 9 rounds a minute with 240 alpha damage. Most medium tanks are decent if they get about 8 rounds a minute rate of fire. With only tanks such as the, the Panther 88 or the STA2 going above that kind of 8 rounds a minute rate of fire mark with this kind of alpha damage. So I'm just trying to spot for this T10. We see some artillery shells coming in, possibly some rounds also from the other ridge line. I think it's possibly the Pershing and the T37 that are firing across, but no one's really connecting. I'm just avoiding his shells, wait for him to fire, and then I pop up and take my opportunity doing our second bit of damage of the game. And right now, I'm just trying to lock down his tracks. And there you go, the artillery finally finds the hit. Oh gosh, there's an Oho coming around the corner. Luckily for me, he puts a round into our tracks, unable to damage our vehicle. I shoot his left track off, I decide to shoot his right track off. I don't really want to load the heat here. If I did, I could probably penetrate his lower plate, but I feel like I can just use this ridgeline to avoid him. The Oho doesn't seem to really think of us as a threat, and instead turns his attention to all of these tanks over here, and so he gives us his side. And we are going to see why you do not give your side to a tank, which fires 9 rounds a minute. The M41 with a 90mm can certainly pick apart its opponents very quickly indeed, even faster than the M41 Walker Bulldog could with its single shot gun. And we also need to take into account that I believe that the M41 Walker Bulldog can't use a gun rammer, right? Because it has an autoloader option on that tank. However, you can use a gun rammer on the 4190 and that is a very satisfying DPM boost for the tank. 
So we put a few rounds into the E75 there, quickly totaling up 962 damage to him. And now we're going to have a go at this IS. We hit him on the moves, an example of the excellent gun handling this tank has. We try and put a second one in. Unfortunately, I think it hits his turret. He manages to block it. We try to put another one in, and we don't quite manage to finish him off, the shell dipping and hitting his tracks. The accuracy of this tank is pretty good, and it fires fast enough to be able to get another one in if you miss. But still, 0.38 accuracy, I believe, off the top of my head, is not the best. But look at this gun handling on the move here. Slam two into that self-propelled gun. Take a look to see if we're going to be able to shoot the Mutz as well. But I'm not really interested in the Mutz too much. I want to get towards my prize, which are the self-propelled guns. Well, possibly maybe I'll shoot at the Mutz one more time. Unfortunately, we miss him. Luckily, the GW Panther on the enemy team misses us. We fire an AP round, and now we fire a HEP round. Now, remember in the garage, I was talking about the fact that these rounds have got 102 millimeters of penetration and 320 alpha damage. And so that means that if you're shooting low tier tank destroyers, such as the GW Panther, there is a fairly good chance that you might roll high enough to be able to take them out with a single shot if you decide to use those high explosive rounds. Unfortunately for us, we're not going to be able to get towards the SU-14-2 at the end of the game, and the T-49 puts a monstrous 152mm shell into him that echoes across the battlefield and takes him out the game. Nevertheless, what a result for the M41 with the 90mm here. We're able to secure over 3,000 damage this game in just under six minutes as well as pick up three kills and remember this is a tier 8 tank a tier 8 light tank doing that kind of damage to higher tier targets for example with the e75 and the t10 we were shooting at and so what does that mean well a huge amount of experience and a decent amount of credits but before we look at the post game stats let's just take a look at a few more of the awesome moments i was able to have in the m41 with the 90 millimeter so here we join the M41 with the 90mm on Serene Coast during one of my favourite stages of the game. That moment where the game is starting to dissolve, there aren't that many tanks left on the enemy team, and you can really use your health and go to town in your light tank. And as we're going to see, use your mobility. The T-54 tracks himself, we put a round into his back, and then we flank around and we can outdo his turret traverse to put another round in with our excellent rate of fire, to put 617 damage into that tier 9 medium tank. You know that a tank is mobile when you can out-traverse even the decent turret traverse of a tier 9 Soviet medium tank like that. And now we're going to go hunting. There's some American tier 10 tank destroyers up here. One, the T-110E3. Remember, that vehicle doesn't have a turret. We could try and get behind him. The other one, the T-110E4. A vehicle which can turn its turret 90 degrees to the left and 90 degrees to the right. We put our first round into his tracks and I'm wondering, does he have a repair kit? I don't want to go up, otherwise he could one-shot me. Luckily, my commander informs me that his engine is damaged. And so that means it's quite likely that we're going to be able to get his flank. We take the opportunity to be aggressive. We go round, we just sneak in behind him. We put in an AP round and now you're going to see me load a HEP round. It's not really going to be too useful considering his hit points was rather low here and we finish him off. Well, actually, thinking about it, we did 230 damage there. And remember, with a standard round, which have 240 alpha damage, that means it's roughly a 50-50 whether we kill him or not. Whereas if we use the HEP round with 102 millimeters of penetration, but 320 alpha damage, we're pretty much 100% chance to be able to take out that T-110E4 with the last shot of the game. And it's gameplay like this why I love my top tier light tanks. It's simply high octane stuff. You're bombing it around on the battlefield without any armor using your mobility and your high DPM output to simply keep you alive. Which is one of the reasons why I think the M41 with the 90 millimeter is going to become one of my most played tier eight premium tanks when it's released. And let's take a look at the post game stats to see a variety of the other reasons. And that's because of the economy of this vehicle, 96,000 credits, and we didn't have to fire any heat rounds on Redshire. That is a whopping amount of credits to make in any light tank, especially considering that the amount of damage and spotting that we did wasn't really that impressive. 3,200 damage done and just under 1,000 spotting and detracking. I can only imagine how many credits you're going to start making when you get up to 5,000 or even 8,000 spotting if you manage to have a good one on Prokhorovka. And also remember that this vehicle makes bonus crew training, 4,105 experience for our double, and that gets additional bonuses to help out your German light tank crews. If you're in RU2, 
251 driver, then get your crew ready because you've got a real opportunity here. During the second round on Serene Coast, we made another 82,000 credits, and even after resupplying the chocolate that we used, a couple of the heat rounds that we fired, and a bit of a repair to the tank, we still make nearly 50,000 credits profit for only doing 2,200 damage and 1,200 spotting, confirming that this tank is competitive with other tier 8 premium tanks when it comes to just earning credits. So the M41 with the 90mm, the first tier 8 premium light tank, and boy is it a joy to play. I have been saying for years how disappointed I was with the T49. The Wargaming simply didn't give it a 90mm without having to resort to firing heat rounds and just dumping credits after credits after credits to effectively play what I felt would just be an upgraded Walker Bulldog. And so here it is, and I think the vehicle is very competitive without being overpowered and will be a thrill for all light tank drivers out there to finally have that top tier premium vehicle. And so when can you get it, you might be asking. Very soon, within the next week, this will be available in the premium shop, but I have no idea for how much. And so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, or maybe it was just useful to you. If it was, please consider giving it a like down below, it really helps the channel out, and let me know in the comments down below what you think of the first tier 8 premium light tank in the game, the M41 with a 90mm. And as always, thank you so much for watching, you've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.